artificial reflections. Artificial, artificial reflections. Artificial, artificial reflections. reflections. Question. List the best questions for a fantasy and sci-fi fan. Chad GPT-1. What initially drew you to the fantasy and science fiction genres, and what do you find most compelling about them? So, probably punk was the most significant thing that happened in my life that influenced me, but something that happened before that that was an equal influence in a different way was the Narnia Chronicles when I was a lad, probably 8, 9, 10, 11 and um, probably led up to my music stuff really that sort of took over and probably stopped reading books and went on to music papers, music magazines from like 11, 12, 13 onwards really. <coughs> but the Narnia Chronicles for me, that just beautiful concept of the wardrobe that is a portal into another world changed everything in the way that I think about things and portals have been a fascination for me ever since and in pretty much every fantasy, science fiction, anything there's a portal somewhere in it that's a door that you can walk through that takes you to somewhere unexpected or very different and in a way, as I got into like interviewing bands, it sounds like a ridiculous comparison, really, but there was something about having a backstage pass at Glastonbury. Quite often I had a crew pass and a press pass, and I could literally walk through pretty much any door, and there was something else on the other side of those doors that was a slightly different world with bands and people doing their thing, and I always found that really fascinating to be able to see what was on the other side so that's the short version of that question. Two, can you recommend any recent or lesser known works in the fantasy or science fiction genres that you've enjoyed? Killjoys is a really great science fiction series that I don't think many people have heard of. I bought it on Amazon Prime. Really great acting, really great characters, lots of portals, the usual Good versus evil, which is in almost every fantasy and sci-fi thing. They're goodies and baddies, but they're very good, very good goodies and baddies, and the goodies are still quite, they're not that good, and the baddies are not that bad, which I suppose is a development in plots these days. Things are less black and white than they used to be. Yeah, so... That was a long pause to find the answer to that. But yeah, I'm going to say Killjoys is the missing gem that I recommend to people. And one more, um, Better Than Us, which is a Russian-made one about rob uh, robots and things becoming more human than us, usual story. I mean, it's the same old story told a thousand times, but sometimes people do it really well. Three. How do you see the themes and messages in science fiction and fantasy reflecting contemporary social and political issues? I mean, they're the same issues, aren't they? Aside from the guns and the flashbang, teleport, monsters, aliens, everything, that you know, it always comes back to moral dilemmas. What's the right thing to do? Do you sacrifice a small amount of people for a large, to save the larger amount? You know, all the sort of classic dilemmas. I think being able to explore them in a recreational fantasy way kind of allows our brains to exercise something that I, I do think is useful. I think um, imagineering is useful and um, what ifs are useful. In, in, a, in a way, it's a form of philosophy put into a form of entertainment so you know not everything has to make you think either but I think being able to leave our everyday world and recognize that it wouldn't be so different even if everything was different the issues that we'd have would still be the same who's your friend who's your ally who's your enemy who's your family what's your goals what's your ambitions what do you want to do with it all I don't, I don't think those things change 
whatever's going on. So, but putting it into a very different context in a future city with different crazy stuff going on is always very entertaining, isn't it? Four. What do you think is the appeal of fantastical or speculative worlds, and how do they help us explore our own reality? Well, I think the appeal is taking something that seems so fantastical or abstract and putting it into a fantastical environment and realising that the issues in that are the same as that we have in our lives. Making a, an ethical choice, trying to do our best, honouring friends or family. Yeah, that sounds like a very dull answer to an interesting question. I might have to come back to that. Five. How do you approach world building in your own writing or creative work? And what are some key elements you consider when creating a new universe? Well, ta-da, you know, make an effort to put up a background, have some lighting, think about some music. All of those things should combine to create a scene, create an atmosphere. Otherwise, I find it very disappointing that people just stick a camera on sitting in their bedroom in front of their bed. It just seems really lazy to me. So I think that is part of world building. You, you know, create a frame, create something to be within and, um, and then do something interesting with it. Six, how do you think the development of new technologies or scientific discoveries will impact the way we approach science fiction in the future? Well, quantum computing's round the corner, nanotechnology's round the corner. Both of those things are going to radically alter the world that we live in, and artificial intelligence, obviously, which is what this project is about, is is going to take off exponentially in a way that I'm pretty sure that two years after I make this and it probably noodles around on YouTube for a bit, it will be very out of date within two years. So what we've had in the last century or so, the shift from horses to cars, from phones to the internet, I think we're going to get another jump, really, which will be artificial intelligence, nanotechnology and quantum computing. Seven. What are some of your favourite subgenres within science fiction or fantasy? And why do you find them particularly compelling? I'm not sure I know the answer to that about subgenres. I mean, science fiction, fantasy, they're nearly all thrillers in some way, shape or form, I guess. It's all about the characters for me. If I, if I like three, four of the characters and I'm interested in them, then I'm in. And if it tells a story that's reasonably compelling, then I'll, I'll be in right to the end. If I don't like any of the characters, then I'm out. So it's more about that than subgenres, I think. Eight. Can you recommend any podcasts, blogs, or other resources for fans of science fiction and fantasy? Comic Book Girl 19 on YouTube. Uh, she did a really brilliant analysis of Game of Thrones as it went along. Uh, in the good times and the bad, she's very forensic about it and reads all the books and compares them. Oh, she does lots of other things as well, Marvel things and lots of other things. So, I mean, there's a thousand people out there doing that, but I think she is one of the best, very entertaining. Nine. How do you see the role of science fiction and fantasy in popular culture evolving in the coming years? I mean, we've been talking about interactivity in TV for a long time and it's not happened so there was one episode of black mirror called cumbersnatch that's got like an interactive component to it where you run to a plot point and then it pauses and it's like should the person jump or not or whatever and you choose yes or no and i am guessing that more of that will come into our programming and also, a lot of people are watching the screen with another screen in their hands now, so if you join people's phones to what's going on, to what they're watching, and flick things between the big screen and the little screen, I think that could be quite exciting, and I think that's still around a corner. I don't know how long that corner is. 10. 
Finally, what is your all-time favorite science fiction or fantasy book, movie, or TV show, and what makes it stand out to you? Well, book-wise, it's still the Narnia Chronicles, but I don't think they did a particularly good job with converting those into TV and film. His Dark Materials, I thought those three books were really superb, Philip Pullman, and I think they did a good job with the BBC interpretation of that, so I'm going to say that. It's just really entrancing, and I think The Subtle Knife is the most interesting object in any fantasy film or book ever. Being able to cut holes into other worlds, that's what I always wanted to do. Artificial, artificial reflections. reflections. Artificial reflections. Artificial reflections.